Hello all! Today I thought I'd read you an essay that I wrote for the AP Lang exam last May. For those of you that don't know, you actually can get your free response booklets from basically any AP test sent back to you as long as you order them by September 10th from the College Board website. So I did that, and if you felt particularly proud of any one of your essays, I'd recommend you do that as well. The reason I'd like to share this particular essay with you is that it is the one that I had the most fun writing and that I feel I did the best on. So I'm going to read it for you now and I hope that you enjoy it. The prompt was an excerpt from a book entitled Empire of Illusion. It was written by Chris Hedges and we had to corroborate, qualify, or refute his argument. The quote from Hedge's book went as follows. The most essential skill in a political theater and a consumer culture is artifice. Political leaders who use the tools of mass propaganda to create a sense of faux intimacy with others no longer need to be competent, sincere, or honest. They need only to appear to have these qualities. Most of all, they need a story, a personal narrative. The reality of the narrative is irrelevant. It can be completely at odds with the facts. The consistency and emotional appeal of the story are paramount. Those who are best at deception succeed. Those who have not mastered the art of entertainment are ignored. They become unreal. In an image-based culture communicates through narratives, pictures, and pseudo-drama. All right, that was the prompt. Now, here is my actual essay response where I chose to defend the statement. It is an unfortunate truth that deception and artifice do not hinder one's chances of success as much as they had ought to in the modern world. Prominent people and corporations have repeatedly deceived the public with little consequence, and those able to feign an emotional connection have been falsely heralded as relatable and sympathetic to an undeserved extent. Even being caught in an act of deception is unlikely to lead to one's ruination if there is a way to clearly distract from the issue's implications. This has been especially evident in recent politics, advertisements, and corporate scandals. Hedge's assertion that political leaders need to only appear competent, sincere, or honest to be successful in their career seems particularly compelling in the light of the recent 2016 presidential election and subsequent events. The chosen Democratic candidate had a long political career, but was widely regarded as unrelatable or elitist. The chosen Republican candidate was a wealthy TV personality with charisma and confidence, but little political experience. Though it was a close race, Republican candidate Trump's electoral victory suggests a preference for artifice and entertainment over experience coupled with an inability to connect. Many voters praised Trump for always saying what was on his mind, even though what was on his mind was often not considerably presidential. Indeed, scandals, indeed, scandals ravaged the campaigns of both forerunner candidates, causing many to question their suitability in the presidential role. However, scandals impacted Democratic candidate Clinton's prospects far more negatively than Trump's, partially due to Trump's expert ability to change the subject or make a topic seem far more or less important than it is through his strong speaking abilities and confident personality. It has become evident as Trump enters the role of president that many of his bold campaign promises were pure artifice, while others will prove harder to achieve than he presented them to a considerable extent. For instance, Clinton will probably not be locked up anytime soon, Funding for the Mexican border wall is nowhere to be found, and the president faces considerable opposition to his plans for repealing and replacing Obamacare. Still, many Americans remain major Trump fans, heralding his new presidential way of giving speeches and his minor exaggerated victories such as putting Gorsuch on the Supreme Court. This is just a sidebar here. I'd like to point out that this essay was written in May, and that was when Trump's average popularity and approval rating was not below 40%, so yeah. The trend of entertainment and politics becoming increasingly connected is reflected in the media and in the enormous list of presidential candidates already set to run in 2020. Competence is being increasingly supplanted by confidence and false sympathy. 
Deception is also increasingly a factor in success in advertising campaigns and other corporate actions. The faux intimacy Hedge mentions in regards to politics is equally applicable to many ad campaigns of recent years, often portraying an attractive man or woman sharing their personal narrative to convince you to purchase or invest in a given product. Ads focus more on emotions than the actual merit of a given product or service, often using fallacious reasoning or conveying practically no information about the product or service itself. This is especially evident in car ads, particularly a recent ad which appears to be telling the story of a girl and her puppy set to inspiring emotional music. It unexpectedly ends with a scene in which the two are hugging next to a car, and a pun compares the dog with the car, portraying the car as one's best friend for all life's journeys. This ad and others like it tell a positive, inspiring story, but it's one with very little attributability to the product endorsed by the ad. Yet somehow, these ads have proven to be exceptionally effective. This is due to the paradox of the 21st century, an unprecedented information age in which the general populace is less concerned than ever with actual information. Instead, we concern ourselves with such artificial and contrived influences as personality and faux intimacy, and we allow ourselves to be distracted by emotional appeals backed by little logic. Every once in a while, we hold a person or group fully accountable for a deception, but skillful people and groups quickly recover from such issues. Brief instances of horror and betrayal and distrust over time succumb to still more artifice. In recent years, for instance, Chipotle and Samsung services both had some serious issues which were unsuccessfully covered up. The businesses dealt with these crises by quickly admitting fault, releasing statements about the steps they would take to solve the issues, and then pretending like the issues never happened, releasing new ad campaigns more upbeat, inspiring, and sensationalistic than ever. Many saw the Chipotle outbreaks and Samsung flammability issues as major breaches of trust, yet within a month or two of each crisis were back eating burritos and texting with swipe key. Big corporations possess the uncanny ability to distract from scandals quickly and regain people's trust after major breaches of it. The long-standing corruption within FIFA does not prevent thousands of fans from flocking to their soccer games year after year. Despite a series of sexual harassment-based firings, Fox News is still watched by thousands of Americans. And shoppers are quick to forget child labor infringement by a major clothing company in its third world factories if they happen to spot a really nice shirt at a discount price at the mall one day. Corporations and politicians alike trick, lie, and deceive their supporters on a near constant basis, but if they cover well and maintain the appearance of confidence, relatability, or general sincerity, they avoid all but the briefest of notable consequences. In such a society, it is not hard to believe that the most essential skill for obtaining and maintaining success in this age is, in fact, artifice. All right, that was it. That was my essay. I hope you enjoyed it. And just in case any of you were planning on committing this essay to memory and plagiarizing it, I would personally not recommend that because this essay is very specifically tied to this prompt which was given by the College Board this year. The prompt is very unlikely to be given again, and I tend to write with a very distinctive voice and tone that does not resemble most of my peers. But I wouldn't expect most of the people who are watching this video to have that kind of nefarious plan up their sleeves, so... As always, thanks for your time.